we're on week seven of the Wake to Righteousness, volume two. And the title of this week's lesson is No More Judgment, Only Acceptance. Yay. You know, one of the things that I know in my own life as I have awakened to righteousness, as I've realized who I am in Christ, the more I embrace the love of Jesus for me, the more I see myself the way he sees me, the more I see others the way he sees them. I know that the, um, I don't know what you call it, the fruit or whatever of walking in the, under the law or living under the law is comparing and judgment and condemnation, not only for yourself, but for everybody around you. When you live under the law, when you live under the law, you're living in constant judgment of yourself, whether or not you measure up or whether you don't. And that judgment of yourself pours out onto everybody else around you. And so you're constantly judging whether other people measure up or whether they don't. And because your heart is broken, because you haven't embraced the love of God that makes our hearts whole, then it's almost like something that helps us in, in a weird sort of way feel better about ourselves, you know? When we're looking down on someone else because they're not doing quite as well as we are, in some weird way it makes us feel better about ourselves. But really we don't. Really it doesn't help. But it's the, it's the bondage of living under the law. And as we've learned through Awake to Righteousness and through reading Romans um, we're the righteousness of God in Christ. We're perfect and holy and righteous and acceptable before God. And we've been learning that and establishing our heart in that for many, many chapters. And this week we're going to go into Romans chapter 14. And it's talking about as you have ex been accepted by Jesus, as you have been loved by him, love others. The same acceptance that you receive and really, you know what, you can think of that as this is what I need to do, but it, that's not what it is. It's when you receive that acceptance, acceptance is the fruit of your life. You don't even have to try to love people. You don't even have to try to accept people. It's just the fruit of your life. When you feel good about yourself because you are embracing the Father's good opinion of you, then when you look around you, all you see is goodness. And if you're not seeing goodness, if you're not seeing wonderful, beautiful, accepted, and righteous people, the answer to that is go be with Jesus. Let him love on you. Let him remind you who you are. Because when you know who you are, you love from the center of who you are. So we're going to start in Romans 14, 1 this morning. I'm going to read through verse 4. When we wake to our righteous nature in Christ, we live free from condemning ourselves and others. Romans 14, 1. Accept other, believer, other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. <laughs> That's a good one. We maybe need to ponder that one for just a little second. Let me read it again. Accept other believers who are weak in faith. Remember what faith means. Reliance upon Jesus. So accept other believers who, who aren't at the same place as you are when it comes to understanding that they're righteous in Christ. When we, you know, the most beautiful thing is, is again, another fruit of awakening to righteousness is you don't have to argue to make yourself right. You're already right. You're already righteous in Jesus. And so when we come in contact with another believer that still believes that they have to do this or do that to be acceptable to God, instead of arguing with them, we can just say, you know what? You're wonderful. You're righteous. You're beautiful. Because you know what? That's what everybody wants. They want to be acceptable and pleasing to God. And if you just pour the love on, there's no reason to argue. It's right in the word of God. God's word says those who put their faith in Christ are righteous and approved and accepted and qualified, forgiven forever. 
And, and when people are, you know, it's like when people want to argue with me about, you know, what I teach and the Holy, what the Holy Spirit has taught me and what I've lived in, it's like, you know what, I'm just repeating what my father says. I'm just saying what my father says. I'm not making this up. I read it right out of the Bible. And, you know, if you want to argue with somebody, argue with the father because he says you're righteous because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So that's what's true. And if you're settled in that, you don't have to convince anybody of it. Isn't that good? It's the Holy Spirit that showed me. I may have been, you know, for, for me, it really was the Spirit of God. I didn't read any book. I didn't listen to any teacher. It was just me and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and a desperate cry for freedom. That's all it was for me, sitting in my home with my Bible saying, Lord, I'm not seeing something right because I'm not experiencing your peace and joy in my life. Show me the truth. Help me to see. And what he showed me, the Holy Spirit showed me, was Jesus. Jesus was out of focus in my life. Connie was the focus of her life. And when Connie was the focus of her life, she didn't accept herself, and she didn't accept anyone else either. But when Jesus became the focus of my life, then it's like, you know, you can disagree if you want to, but Jesus loves us. This I know. He made us righteous. The Bible tells us so. And you can just rest. And you know what? I've had people. I've been teaching this now for, I actually started teaching Bible study in 1993. And I've had people come to Bible study. And they've walked out mad, disagreeing with me. The reason why is because they think it can't be that easy. I have learned all my life the five steps to prosperity. Don't tell me that's not the way to go. Okay, well, keep doing your five steps if you want. That's okay. But you know what? Those, some of those very people who've walked out of here upset because they didn't agree that Jesus made us righteous. Not a, they, it's not that they didn't agree with me. They didn't agree with the true good news of the gospel. See, I don't have to be upset. I don't have to be offended. I don't have to try to convince them that I'm right. I know it's true. How do I know it's true? The Word of God told me, showed me, and the Spirit of God showed me. The Word of God told me, and the Spirit of God showed me. And I know it's true. And it's brought me peace and joy. And so the very, some of the very people who've walked out upset have come back. And you know why? Because of the peace and the joy that they see in a person who learns to rely and trust in what Jesus has done. There is no other peace outside of that. There is no peace in the law. There is no peace in the five steps to prosperity. There's no peace in the five things you have to do to be healed. There's no peace in comparing and judging people. There's no peace in any of that. There's only peace in Jesus. And when we embrace that we are righteous, that we are loved, that we are accepted, and that we are approved, we don't have to argue that we're right with anybody. Just let our light shine, and they will come. They will come. They will want to know, what is that peace that you have? What, how are you able to love people that are ugly to you? You know? Where does your joy come from when you're facing a difficult situation? It comes from knowing that I'm righteous because of Jesus. That's where my peace comes from. And knowing that I'm righteous because of Jesus makes me know how much I'm loved. Isn't that good? It's our love that's going to draw people to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. It's our acceptance, not our judgment. It's our love, not our arguing. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2. 
<laughs> this may be a long Bible study now. <laughs> For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer with a sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Isn't that interesting? Those who, feel, those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. I love that. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do, for God has accepted them. Who are you to condemn someone else's servants? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. Isn't that beautiful? It's like, who are we to look down on somebody else? To look down on ourselves. Who are we to look down on ourselves? Or who are we to look down on someone else? When we stand before the Father, our Father's good opinion of us is what is true. The King of Kings judges, if you want to say, judges Everyone in Christ as perfect and without fault. And when we embrace that again, when we truly embrace it. The struggle is real. Life happens to all of us. But there's a better way to live. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Because of Jesus Ministries invites you to a Women of Grace conference. Experience powerful grace-filled messages from Connie Witter, Nicole Marbach, Trisha Gunn, Gwen Myrie, Shannon Orr, Sherry Reether, and Christy Rose. Come be with us in Birmingham, Alabama, Branson, Missouri, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Morton, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're free. You're free. Remember that you're free. You're free from fear. You're free from condemnation. You're free from guilt. You're free from trying to earn God's favor. You're free. For more information or to register, go to womenofgrace.us or call 918-994-6500. We look forward to seeing you there. How do you know you're truly embracing that you are righteous and loved and approved? How do you know that? Because the fruit of your life towards others is that they are loved and wonderful and approved regardless of what they eat or drink or how they act or what they do. We're all in different, you know, our, our relationship with the Lord, we're all in different places with our relationship with the Lord. You know, 20 years ago, all I thought of is it was all about what Connie needed to do. And if somebody would have came up to me and just argued with me that it wasn't, that wasn't true, I probably would have just stuck my feet down and said, no, you're wrong and I'm right. You know, but if I seen peace in someone's life, if I seen joy in someone's life, if I seen someone loving other people, I'd w I would wake up and go, tell me more. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm looking for fruit. That's what I'm looking for. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to hear from people who, who, who understand that they are loved and righteous, and that is pouring out of their body, their cells. It's just love, acceptance. We sometimes get so caught up in our opinions, you know, in our customs, what we think, what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, whether we should drink wine or whether we shouldn't drink wine, whether we should go to church on Sunday or go to church on Saturday, or whether we should go to church at all. <laughs> and we get so caught up in all of these external things when the reality is we stand before God holy and blameless and without fault. Every single one of us who have placed our faith in Christ are equal, whether we drink wine or whether we don't, whether we eat meat or whether we don't whether we go to church five times or whether we don't go to church at all in one week. It doesn't matter. We're all the same because our Father's view and opinion of us is what is true. Oh, that's so good. With the Lord's help, 
they will stand and receive his approval. How does, how, how does our Father judge a person who is in Christ? We have our Father's eyes. I love that. I love thinking that about myself. That's awaking to righteousness. I have my Father's eyes. I have my Father's eyes. When I look at you, I see you the way the Father does. How does the Father see you? Colossians 1.20 and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. How do we stand before the Father in Christ? Holy and blameless and without a single fault. Now when you realize that you have a lot of faults <laughs> and yet you stand before the Father without a single fault, that is greater love than I have ever found in this world. And the truth is, he never changes his view of you. If, again, I said this a few weeks back, if your good works didn't make you without fault, then your bad behavior cannot make you without fault. I mean, make you fault. What am I trying to say? <laughs> then your bad behavior can't make you with fault. Is that better? It doesn't have to do with your behavior. It has to do with your faith in Christ. That is the determining factor of how you stand before the Father. If you have placed your faith in Christ, you have been made perfect forever. You stand blameless, holy, and without fault before him forever. To think that our actions can take that away is to take away the power of the gospel. And when you truly embrace that, I'm telling you, that's, that's where your righteousness comes from. Jesus, not your actions. When you truly embrace that, your view of other people will change completely because their actions don't make them unrighteous either or more righteous. Their actions don't make them less righteous than you. Their actions don't make them more righteous than you. We in this room who have placed our faith in Christ are completely equal. We are all just as good as the other. We are all just as wonderful and holy and righteous and qualified and without fault. And let me tell you what's going to make a difference in our lives is whether or not we embrace that or not. That's the only difference in all of us in this room. Because the Father's opinion never changes. His good opinion of you never changes. Why? Because of Jesus and his gift that is irrevocable. And so the thing that changes our lives, the thing that causes fruit to come forth, the thing that causes the manifestation of God's glory to come out in our lives is when we embrace the Father's opinion of us. That's what makes the difference. So guess what? A person who is maybe acting badly, all they need to know is who they are. They don't need to know that they're worse than you because they act differently. They need to know that they're loved and approved and accepted and without fault in the Father's eyes. That is the power of the gospel. That is what causes people to rise above sin and live a righteous life. Because as a person thinks in his heart, so are they. If I believe I'm righteous... I'm going to live righteously. If I believe I'm unrighteous, I'm going to live unrighteously, even though I'm righteous in Christ. All right, we're going to continue Romans 14, verse 5. In the same way, some think one day is more holy than another day, while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Look at there. God says it doesn't matter what day. 
whatever day you choose. To. It's okay. You be led by the Spirit of God. You be led by your heart. I love that. We're free. We're free to be led by our God's Spirit and not put off our opinions on someone else. Could you imagine if we all just really let everyone be free? I mean, that's heaven. To just, you hear God. You know, you hear God on what movie to go watch. You hear God on what to eat, not to eat. You hear God on what day to go to church and what day not to go to church. You're led by God's spirit. Could you imagine if we all embraced this truth? How free of judgment we would be? You're led by God's spirit. If you feel like going to church this morning, God put that desire in you. If you feel like staying at bedside assembly, that's okay too. Maybe Jesus wants to meet you by himself today. It doesn't make you any worse or any better than the next person who does or doesn't. Oh my goodness, there's a revelation happening in here. Those, okay, those who worship the Lord on a special day, do it to honor him. Verse 6, those who eat any kind of food do so to honor the Lord, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to him. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Verse 9, Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. And it's true. If you are a believer, if you have placed your faith in Christ at the center of your being, you want to please God. And that's the truth. Every person who has accepted Jesus, our nature is to want to please God. And so let's believe in each other. <laughs> let's believe that that's true of each other. We really do want to please God. We really do want to honor God. So how does that happen again? By knowing who we are. By embracing our new identity in Christ. That's how we honor God. The best thing we can do for him is to embrace what he's done for us. Verse 10. So why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we all stand before the judgment seat of God. Verse 11. For the scriptures say, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me and every tongue will confess and give praise to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. Now, before I understood grace and understood Jesus, this, this, this kind of scripture would put fear in me. And I just, I want to say this really quick so that any of you who read through the Bible and you see the judgment scriptures, you know, all of us will stand before the judgment seat of God. Oh my goodness. What if I haven't done everything right? What if I'm disapproving to God, you know? What if he doesn't accept me? I mean, I used to think those thoughts. Did you? I mean, those, those end-time uh, messages would put fear in me. Please don't come back. Please don't come back. I haven't got it all right yet. Do you hear that? I haven't got it all right yet. Guess what? When I realized Jesus made me right, I'm come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Come quickly. Because when you read those scriptures in the Bible, remember, we stand before the Father holy, blameless, and without a single fault. We don't have to be afraid of standing before the judgment seat of, of God. Because why? He judges us righteous and holy because of Jesus, not because of our actions. You don't ever have to get afraid of those scriptures anymore. Are you in Christ? Ask yourself, am I in Christ? Then you're going to be judged the way Jesus is judged. You can stand confident and secure. Right now and forever, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Just to hear you say, beloved, you are perfect in my sight because of Jesus. Hmm. A 
awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness, Volume 2, and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now, Awake to Righteousness, Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. The struggle is real. Life happens to all of us. But there's a better way to live. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Because of Jesus Ministries invites you to a Women of Grace conference. Experience powerful, grace-filled messages from Connie Witter, Nicole Marbach, Trisha Gunn, Gwen Myrie, Shannon Orr, Sherry Reether, and Christy Rose. Come be with us in Birmingham, Alabama, Branson, Missouri, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Morton, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're free, you're free. Remember that you're free. You're free from fear. You're free from condemnation. You're free from guilt. You're free from trying to earn God's favor. You're free. For more information or to register, go to womenofgrace.us or call 918-994-6500. We look forward to seeing you there. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.